I just found out about these Jet Puffed Color Changer Marshmallows, which makes me a little bit sad because I'm pretty sure campfire season is over. But this product is so cool. It's a bag of blue and pink marshmallows that when you roast them, turn to orange and green marshmallows. And the food scientist in me had to investigate just how exactly did Jet Puff pull off this color changing magic. And the funny thing is, after thinking about this very hard, they did this by something most of us learned in preschool. This bag of color changing marshmallows, I cannot find anywhere. I've called Walmart, I've called Target, it's out of stock and I hate calling places I would much rather message or email, so I slumped pretty low. Every place I've checked, it's out of stock, but that's fine. That's no big deal because when you get your bachelor's degree in food science, one thing they teach you, and I've had on so many exams, is that all the clues you need are in the ingredient statement. Once I had the ingredient statement, thank you internet, I went right to the end of it because things like colors or flavors, these are used in such small amounts in our food that they're always listed last. The first thing that pops out at me is that there's a couple of artificial colors. That's the blue one, red 40, red three, and yellow six. These colors are synthetic, meaning they're human made. So I don't think these are the culprit for this color changing because uh, synthetic or artificial colors, they're made to be very, very stable. Artificial colors, they are stable to, even if a food's exposed to heat, if it's frozen, if it's uh, exposed to air, to light. Artificial colors are stable, stable, stable. They do not change their shade. What I do think these colors are used for is the blue makes the blue marshmallow and the red and yellow together are mixed to make that pinkish marshmallow. So it's simply the original colors of the product. So where to next? Well, there's actually something very interesting on the ingredient statement right before those artificial colors, and that's turmeric oleo resin, which is also added for color. Turmeric is a spice and it has this really nice yellow pigment inside called curcumin. And so this is a natural colorant, a way to naturally color our foods. And natural colors in foods, they are almost always responsible for a color change. They are just notoriously unstable. Another great example of this besides turmeric is purple cabbage, which the pigments can be pink, purple, blue, simply depending on what pH the food is. But let's get back to turmeric because what exactly is turmeric oleo resin? Maybe you've never seen this oleo resin word on your food before. This simply means that it's an oil based ingredient. So the oleo resin just means it's like a viscous oil that is used to hold in all the color or flavor molecules that were extracted from the turmeric. This is done for a lot of natural colors and flavors because sometimes those molecules they aren't water soluble or they don't like to be in water. They would much rather be in an oil. But this turmeric oleo resin, which is a yellowish color, why add it? Because remember, we already have an artificial color, yellow number six, in the product on that ingredient statement. So why add both? Well, I don't think this is just any turmeric oleo resin. I actually think it's an encapsulated turmeric oleo resin. Now encapsulation or micro encapsulation is just a way to sort of hide or protect certain food components. Basically you make these little capsules where the ingredient you wanna protect, say like color here, we put the color in the middle, in the core, and then we surround it by this protective shell. So what I believe Jet Puff did was they encapsulated that yellow color from the turmeric so that it would only be released once the marshmallow started to be roasted. So now the question is, what about a campfire could make those capsules release that yellow color? And I have a couple guesses. Well, 
I have two guesses for this. My first thought is that it's simply the heat from the fire that could melt away that protective shell of the capsule and release the yellow color. But this only works if that shell is made from an ingredient that could melt at the temperature of a campfire. But what I did found in, find in literature is that oftentimes gelatin is used as one of these uh, shell materials, which gelatin, if you've ever left like a bag of gummy bears in a car on a sunny day, unfortunately, you know, like me, gelatin will melt. So this heat could melt the shell away and voila, we have yellow. My second thought has to do with moisture, having moisture activate that color change. And the reason I thought of this is to have that just the act of combustion or of a burning fire produces water vapor or more water, more moisture right by the marshmallow. And this water vapor could be used to dissolve that protective shell and release the yellow color. Of course, we have to make sure that the shell is made up of ingredients that are water soluble or would be dissolved by water. But I did see in many encapsulation processes, these ingredients of the shell are actually water soluble. So gum acacia, for example, or other thickeners, water could actually dissolve them and release that inner yellow color. I think it's also very possible that maybe both of these processes, the heat and the moisture, are going on at the same time. So maybe it's not like just an either or situation. But if you don't quite see what causes this color change yet, let me come back to mixing colors. So we have a marshmallow that starts off blue. During the roasting process, a yellow color is released. What happens when we have blue and yellow? Well, we get green, the end color of the marshmallow. The same is said for that marshmallow that starts off this reddish pink. Well, when we add that yellow color later during roasting, what we get is orange. So like I said, a concept that we all probably learned in preschool, but we didn't realize it applied to these color changing marshmallows.